Hugo. Uh, I always really liked the name Hugo and I had three sons and uh, I always said if I had a fourth son, his name would be Hugo. And when we were buying Hugo, my youngest son, Joseph, said, oh, mum always said if she had a fourth son, it would be Hugo. So, of course, uh, that became his name. So my children's names start with a J-H-J-H. -H -H. So there was a bit of a pattern there. So I took him out for a walk um, just around the footpath that night because I thought he, he likes to have his walk and have a sniff and everything. So we were walking along and our street ended um, at the railway line and um, it was fenced. So there was no way he could get on, um, well, so I thought, no way he could get onto the railway line. So he's running along, sniffing and whatever. Anyway, we were running, uh, walking along the track and next thing this train went past and he always liked to bark at them and chase them like, you know, through the fence, and but he'd just come back. Then uh, this particular night, I could almost see his brain go, I'm going to catch this train. And he just took off, took off after the train. And I remember thinking, oh, surely he's going to stop. Anyway, he just kept running and I called after him. But of course, the noise of the train, um, he wouldn't have heard me. I don't think he was intent on stopping. He literally ran, oh, it would have been at least 50 metres. And then he went through the chicane. So, because I thought with the fence we'd be okay, but he turned right, right, left, left, and onto the track. So I ran down, thinking, "Oh my goodness, what what's going to happen?" And fortunately, it was a fair run down because another train went past the other way, and I possibly would have run onto the tracks to to um, see, you know, where he was. So that might not have been good for me. Anyway, I got down there just expecting to see carnage. Anyway, then I heard this really weird noise, like it was a strange sort of, I can't even describe the noise, and I've looked down at the, uh, the tracks and there he is lying there looking at me, like alive, but trying a breathing, and that was his breathing that I could hear, and his paws were just covered in blood, he was covered in blood, and I could see the train. I thought, oh, my God, so I've run onto the tracks and I've picked him up. And I thought, no one survives this. After I received the phone call, I obviously went into emergency situation, which you do at work. So I had already set up uh, oxygen, drip lines, uh, resuscitation, emergency box with drugs, etc., uh, because I wasn't exactly knowing what to expect uh, when she got there. Uh, it's the first hit by train animal I have ever seen and the only one still that I have ever seen. There was a lot of blood uh, all over Hugo. He's dark in colour but you could still see it. I wasn't exactly aware of the damage uh, until probably the next day to be honest. We didn't we didn't quite know how severe it was that night. Uh, so dogs generally in those situations, they don't die from broken bones. They will die from shock before they die from anything. No internal organs were injured in the process, uh, surprisingly. His lungs were clear, they were fine. Uh, the nasal uh, and mouth uh, bleeding was due to, uh, as we found out the following day was that he had skull fractures, he had a broken jaw, he had missing teeth uh, and he obviously, all of those facial injuries is what was leading to leading to the blood. I honestly didn't think that he would have made it more than a few hours, I'll be completely honest. I didn't expect him to be alive the next day at all. A little dog with a big heart has made a remarkable recovery after he was hit by not one, but two trains in Mentone. The five-year-old lost part of his paws and is now blind in one eye, and vets say it's a miracle he's alive. Hugo stayed in care for a month. During that time, he underwent ten surgeries. Parts of his paws were amputated. We weren't sure whether he was going to make it through, but he's a fighter and he kept going. The Herald Sun ran an, an online article about Hugo and his survival. It's changed his personality either. He still doesn't seem neurotic about the trains or anything. The one good thing that came out of it was he was used to only eat roast chicken and now he eats my dog. <laughs> <laughs> Just, I don't, 
think, well, how am I going to tell the kids? Oh my goodness, I can't afford to lose him because he's, he is my favourite son. <laughs> and her actual son is now eating my dog as well. <laughs> So he was five when the accident happened and now he's almost 12. <laughs> yes, I guess um, little dogs always do live um, quite a long time, but I, I assume that it possibly would reduce his longevity. Um, but you know, at this stage he seems okay. Although just in the last few days, he's he seems to be quite sore when he's walking, um, but we'll take him back to the vet and um, they've got, they said that they can offer some things that might assist with that. But he does quite like the couch and, and a, there's a couch outside as well that he, he does like to spend his days on. Uh, so his walking style is that of uh, most of the time now. It wasn't always like this after the accident, but now he walks like he's a three-legged dog. So his right paw generally he keeps raised when he's walking. So I'm really pleased we didn't amputate that leg because he still gets a bit of joy from that. And he can run quite quickly on three legs. In fact, he's faster on three legs than when he tries to run with four. We get in the car, of course, he's in the front seat, and um, we um, head out of the driveway down to the car park, which is right near the beach because he loves his beach walk. Then he uh, likes to walk to one end of the beach and back, and if ever I try to turn early, he, he's not happy about it. He uh, gets tethered to the fence while I go for a swim, uh, he sits there, he's not happy, I can hear him, but as soon as he sees that I'm walking back in, he stops howling. Or not that he howls, but making his whining noise. <coughs> I probably hadn't given pet leave um, too much of a thought and, you know, maybe I might have been scathing of uh, people that like, how oh, I had to take the day off, my dog was so sick and I was so upset, whereas now... Uh, having, especially having had two days off to, um, as carer's leave after his accident, I'm actually very positive about it and quite open to people having pet leave and they've been part of the family for a long time or, you know, or if something, a net terrible accident or something happens, I sort of think, you know, why not? If you come to work, you're not going to do a good day's work anyway. <laughs>